The man's limbs are shackled, blood oases from swollen fingernails. He remained in this strange position for the entire night. The guards roughly threw down an iron tray. The precious water is spilled halfway down the basin. The man dabbed at left and right and drank it all. This is his ration for the day. This tough man has a powerful name. Babylon, the butterfly tattoo on his chest is his trademark. During his life sentence, he escaped three times. No amount of obstacles could shake his resolve. The warden was so impressed by his determination. He was even pardoned by the president. Inspiration and crime seem to be two opposite words. This movie may prove that they can go hand in hand. It's based on a true story. Many believe it's the greatest prison break story in the history of mankind. This man is a handsome man. This is Papillon. Papillon was a thief. The man behind the curtain provides the information. He's the one who steals and gets paid for it. If he hides the loot, He's beaten. Love makes you dizzy. Papillon's got the wind in his sails. He hid some big diamonds for his little girlfriend. The scene was just witnessed. Early the next morning, some officials forced their way into his room. The reason was to kill the man who was beaten yesterday. Papillon was sentenced to life in prison. The evidence was all there. It's obvious that there's collusion between the culprits and the police. There's no point in appealing. The only way is to escape. A Selma told Papillon he had to have money to break out. So he targeted Deja. He's a rich man who's a financial criminal. Every inmate in the prison wanted to kill him. Take his money. When his wife and lawyer left, they promised him they'd appeal to get him out of jail. He'll be home by Christmas, but there's something not quite right about this closeness. Prisoners are banished to a prison, surrounded by ocean to serve their time. On ships transporting prisoners to deserted islands, prisoners are free to kill fellow prisoners for money. Prison guards can turn a blind eye to violence for money. Skinny Dega would never make it out of prison, so they made a deal. Papillon provides protection. Dega provides financial support in Cantonese. At night, a big fat guy tried to kill Dega. Papillon pounces on them. There's a size difference between the two of them. He told Dega to pick up the knife he'd thrown, but he doesn't. The guard spewed a lot of cold air. A bloodstained feast is evidence of a beating. Papillon's limbs are bound by sling cuffs. His swollen fingernails are covered in blood. He stayed in this strange position for the whole night. Hunter, cold, pain. He's not even on the island yet, and he's already experienced it all. But the island is the real hell on earth. This man in might, drinking coffee, is the warden? He walks up slowly. Thousands of inmates kneel down. In the distance, an escaped prisoner was dragged in, covered in blood and saying something. Papillon subconsciously stood up because this is the first helmet he's ever known. The man spat in defiance. The blood stained his white suit. It was taken to the chopping block. <laughs> the blood flowed slowly down the wall. I don't know how many times I've seen this. The concrete wall in the center has turned dark red. This is a prison built on an island. The inmates sleep with bats at night. During the day, there's a lot of work to do. If someone died of exhaustion, they were given their rations. The skinny Dega couldn't hold it in and started having diarrhea. He couldn't hold it in and farted. The money they've been hiding fell out. It's the money they used to break out of prison. Papillon and Dega look for it. This strange behavior attracted Brother Beard's attention. The whole island is full of men. Julad would regularly bring women to the guards. To escape, you need a boat. With high risk comes high profit. I had to put up with it in order to break out of prison. Then one day, the opportunity came. The Pelin and Dega were in charge of transporting the bodies to the outskirts of the city. There was only one guard. Dega was in the middle of the load when he lost his strength. The guard took a whip and whipped him. Each stroke was accompanied by Dega screams. His clothes were stained red. The Pelin grabbed a brick and knocked out the guard. Dega is saved. He's in trouble. He's stumbling for his life. A bullet comes whizzing through the water. You can't see the trajectory clearly in the water. The bullet was only 0.01 centimeters away from him. Luckily, he made it to the shore. Julot's boat could help him escape. But Julot suddenly laughed. Papillon was betrayed. The warden will pay Julot double the money. After that, Papillon was put in a small room in solitary confinement for two years. 90% of the prisoners don't make it out alive. Either they can't take it anymore where they kill themselves or they starve to death. There's a guard on the roof 24 hours a day for weeks of nothing. When they get to me, time. All they get is a bowl of soup like this. He can even stuff his teeth, let alone eat. Every now and then, the guards would come and beat him up. Those who don't give in, like Papillon, only get it harder. His right eye is purple. He's probably got a couple of broken ribs. It's hard to get up. The guards put out an extra bucket for this meal. Inside was a fresh coconut. There was a note hidden in the lid. From now on, there will be a coconut in your bucket every day. He was so moved that he choked up. He took a big bite out of the coconut. Chew it. It smells good. Close your eyes and savor the taste of this wonderful delicacy. He smiled involuntarily. He knew that this was Dega's way. He pulled himself together and worked out hard. He was ready for his next escape. After a year, he had lost a lot of weight, but he got stronger. Once again, at mealtime, a big hand slapped on a steel bucket. The warden noticed the problem. Yes, you see, none of life will be wrong. The pillin kept his mouth shut. From then on, the rations were cut in half. Now he lost even more weight. His hair and beard began to turn gray. He was severely malnourished. It was hard to move. The warden brought him a bowl of broth. It's a solid bowl of meat and vegetables. 
the pillin has no strength to speak. He slowly picks up the spoon and feeds it to the warden. The soup runs down his chin and his shirt. This is a real provocation. Now there was no light from then on. All Papillon had was hunger and darkness. He began to have fantasies. There was always a clown around who looked like Dago. It was as if he could no longer distinguish between fantasy and reality. This is a foot that's been through a lot. The walls and the skin have become one. Cockroaches are avoided. Two guards walk through the door. It's been two years. They pull the man out from under the bed. The face they see is a skull. Bloody palm prints on the wall from his first day. He survived two years. Two years in solitary confinement. Dago has been given a civilian job. Trusted by the warden. He has freedoms that other prisoners don't have. He has a car on his face. His eyeglasses are half broken. His wife is married to his lawyer. No chance of appeal. Then the dull-eyed Papillon spoke. He had been pretending to be crazy. In order to break out of prison again, there are four of us in the escape team. Every time the doctor gave Papillon a sedative, he would secretly save them when the guards were watching a movie. The security was lax. Dega quietly slipped a sedative into his drink. He also stole the key to the prison. One by one, they jump off the walls in the dark. When it was Dega's turn, the alarm went off. He panicked and broke his leg. The bearded man had arranged a boat in advance. Ahead of them was the endless sea and the hope that had been ignited. The boat was rocking. The sea was pounded into the boat by the waves. In the distance, there are dark clouds and thunderstorms. Obviously a precursor to a big wave. The bearded man raised his knife and killed Dega with a broken leg to save weight. We may all survive. Papillon steps up to the plate. This time, Dega doesn't die. He picked up his knife and stabbed him. The weight was off, but the boat capsized. When they woke up again, they were on a strange island. The natives were friendly to them. They finally managed to break out of Chris. Dega and another teammate were ready to stay. But did it really work? If it were that easy, it wouldn't be the greatest Chris and break movie of all time. As Papillon was coming down the hill, he saw the guard's car coming after him. He could have escaped on his own, but he chose to run back and tell Dega. He told Dega that his accomplices had been shot in front of their eyes. Dega and Papillon were both arrested. It turned out that the Aborigines had lied to them. Another five years passed. Papillon's hair had turned gray. The warden came in person because he was the first man to survive five years in prison. What was it that sustained him? Then he was sent to Alcatraz. Unlike before, there were no guards. The inmates are completely free. But there's no food to eat. There are no trees for boats and no hope. All they can do is wait to die. Papillon and Dega meet again. They've been doing this for 10 years. Papillon looked out over the endless ocean. In the middle of it, there was a ray of hope. He had a flash of insight. If only he could float. The waves were facing outward. And the waves would take them far away from here. They made a big plank out of garbage. Let's not even talk about whether or not the can float to land. Jumping from here would be a death sentence. When we left, Dega decided to stay and atone for his sins. Papillon makes a run and then jumps. The water splashed on the surface of the sea. Dega nervously dragged his lame leg to the edge of the cliff. Papillon was not dead. He cried out. And so did Dega. All the emotions he had suppressed for so many years erupted. He watched as Papillon drifted away with an intriguing smile. Thirty years later, Papillon was looking his age. He prepared a bunch of documents. One of them was a butterfly that Dega had drawn for him. He's going to write an autobiography about his experiences. Papillon's experiences were so bizarre. The publisher couldn't believe it. It was a true story. But it's true. It's history. More than 80,000 prisoners were held in exile camps. And many of them were innocent. The autobiography. Babylon was the top seller for seven months. Restraint came to an abrupt end. Strong faith. A friendship that lasts forever. Forgotten history and the path to freedom as a human being. The heart that wants to fly will never never die.